Today, we're gonna to be looking at one of the most useful and practical ways to speed up your code and your workflow through comprehensions. I'm gonna break down list, dictionary, and set comprehensions, showing you guys how you can use them right now. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back guys for another episode of Code with Josh. For obvious reasons, I'm Josh and I'm stoked to have you guys here. Before I dive into today's episode, help me out, hit that like button, drop a comment and subscribe. That really does help out my channel within the crazy YouTube algorithm. Now, today's video is all about comprehensions in Python. And I'm really gonna break this down so you can grasp and use this concept. I've made slides and there's code. If all you care about is the code, all right, use the timestamps below and jump to the code. But I know me and a lot of my audience, we are visual learners. So I like to do you guys justice break it down and then show you how we can use it. Okay, guys, I've been teaching for over eight years now, not on YouTube, okay, not even really online, but mostly through lecture halls and in the classroom. And I've taught all around the world, hundreds and hundreds of students. I am beyond excited to share with you guys that my Python masterclass has just launched. Now ask yourself, what would you achieve if you could actually master and learn Python in just a few weeks? And I'm not talking about watching tutorial after tutorial. Who cares, okay? Now, in my masterclass, I can't guarantee you a job. In fact, I won't even guarantee that. But what I will guarantee you is you will learn Python faster than you ever thought was possible. That is my guarantee to you guys. The first link in the description, that is the link to my masterclass, to the platform that I've spent the last two years building and curating the content. So head on down, first link in the description, check it out. All the other links in the description, they're available to you guys to help you get where you wanna be in Python. Enough said, enough chit chat, okay? I'm the sponsor of today's video, I guess. Let's jump into Python comprehensions. All right, I'm a visual learner. So the first thing I wanna do is go through a few slides I've put together quickly for you guys that just break down what are comprehensions in Python and how you can utilize them to speed up your workflow and your code. Okay, so really the structure of a comprehension looks like this. We have a list, a set, a generator, a dictionary, okay? Um, and I, had, I just have a list example here. We begin with an expression, then we have a for loop. These only work with for loops because we want to loop through an iterable. What is an iterable? Like I said, it's going to be a list, dictionary, set, um, a generator, and then we can put a condition that must be true for each item to go into this new comprehension. So a quick example of this would be a list, okay? Here I just have basic code. We have a list of numbers, right? And in my code, I'm looping through the numbers for every number in my list numbers. If that number is even, we are going to append it to evens. Right, but we have a lot of lines of code going on and I'm using for, in, if, I'm using append. Really, all of this can be done in a single line of code. This is our comprehension. So what's really going on in this comprehension? Well, here I've broken it down. Okay, um, I create a new list in this example, and the first part is an element. This is like the name that's going to represent each element in this new list. Okay, um, what do you want to call it? So I'm going to call it num. Now, right now, I don't have it defined, so I need to define num. This is where our loop comes into play. What are we going through? So this is my original list of numbers, and here the uh, element in our list, the symbol, um, this represents the element here. So for every num in numbers, I've now defined num. Then we could follow it by a condition. What must be true in order for num to become an element in this new list? Well, it must be even. Okay, here I've really put one, two, three, the steps for you guys. A conditional statement is optional, okay? But uh, the comprehension really encompasses the first two parts here, right? Uh, the condition is optional, but we still widely use this. 
Okay, um, so another example would be dictionaries. So I just covered lists. A set would roughly work the same way. A generator is roughly going to work the same way. A dictionary, we can also make comprehensions with that as well. So if I have a dictionary of people, I got Chuck, Betty, Tim, and Al. Great group of people. Uh, their names are the keys in the dictionary, and the values are their ages. I want to pull anyone who's a senior citizen out of the people's dictionary, and I want to put them inside seniors. So standard code, uh, I would create my for loop. I would create my two key value pairs, name and age. These represent each item here, name, age. And I want to go through my people dictionary, and we can access both of those using items. Okay, So I'm just looping through my dictionary. If the age is over 60, I'm going to take my new dictionary, give it the key, which is the name associated with that, and assign the value. So the output is going to be this here. Okay. So once again, there's nothing wrong with this. But if we're making comprehensions, we could speed it up. We could roughly do the same thing. I take this chunk of code and we put it in a single line of code. There's no need for this anymore. This is a really cool feature of Python. Okay, uh, What does that look like broken down? Well, sort of the same thing. Initially, we have our expression, or in this case, I am creating the key value pair that's going to be inside this new dictionary seniors. Once I make this key value pair, you need to create the key and value. So we are going to loop through. What are we looping through? I have my for loop. I'm looping through a dictionary. Then we could have a condition if we want to put a condition. The same steps apply. We set up a new key pair name, we loop, and we create a conditional statement. All right, let's jump right into VS Code and code out some of these problems where you're going to see how to use list, set, and dictionary comprehensions. All right, guys, so I got four examples here. I have the before for all the code. And honestly, as I go through, if you guys got value from the lesson part of this, I want you to just pause the video and try to code out the comprehensions on your own. Okay, don't watch this part. Okay, code them out on your own as a challenge. Then you can watch this, or you can just watch me do it now. Okay, so I'm going to begin with the first list comprehension. I'm going to give some space here. It's less distracting. We have a list of numbers, and really I want to go through this list. So for every number in nums, if the number is positive, we're just going to append it. So ultimately our output is meant to be this. Okay, I'm going to store my output down here because we're going to use the same thing. So if I were to create a comprehension for this, I'm going to create a comprehension. Let's just call it positive numbers like we have up here before. And we're going to create a list. Now, what is each element in the list? Well, okay, it's going to be a number. So I'm going to call it num. Now, I don't have num. So I need to go through something. What are we going through for every number? in our list numbers, all right? So this is taking this for loop. We've used that for loop, all right? Now, what must be true if we want the element to go here? Well, if the number is greater than or equal to zero, this now eliminates that part. And because we're doing a comprehension, we don't even need to append anymore. So I've just removed all of those. This is going to produce the exact same output. We can turn off the list. That's not needed. I've just saved four lines of code. When we run this, we're still going to see the output 10, 3, 8, and 6 based on the comprehension we made right there. So that's done, boom, in a single line of code. Okay, very cool. I'm going to turn off print. Okay, let's clear my terminal. Let's just go down to our next one. So here now is a bit different. We have a list of emails, okay, user one, admin, support, whatever. Uh, if you're still using Outlook, I, or I, excuse me, if you're still using Yahoo, uh, come on, what are we doing now? <laughs> uh, so I just threw in some of these emails. And really, I'm going to go through the emails, and I want to extract the, uh, our domain. And I want to put that in the new list. So for every email in our list of emails, I'm creating a domain. How do we cut and remove that domain? Well, we take the email and we use the Python split method. 
This breaks strings apart and it makes a list of those strings. We just need to specify where do we want to split it. So I want to split it everywhere we have the at. Now really, this is an output at this point, and it's going to be like user1, uh, and then we're going to have a gmail.com. Right? So I want to target the first element, 0, 1. Domain is going to be representing this key part here. We're appending it to our list. This gives us this output we're looking for. Okay. So uh, I'll actually just turn the print back on. How can we get this now in a single comprehension? Did you guys try it already? Okay, we're gonna take our domains. I'm gonna create a new list for this. What is each element? What is our element in the list? Well, it's gonna be email.split. We wanna split at the at, and we wanna get the first element in the list. Now, right now, guys, this is really nothing. Okay, so we need to go through something for every email in our list emails. That's it for this one. There is no need for a conditional statement, right? Our comprehensions don't necessarily need a condition. In this case, we're just choosing the element we want, email, which is coming from email. We're gonna split that at the at, get the second, the first element, and that represents our domains, right? There is no need now for any of this code. When we run the code, we're still going to see the same output based on our comprehension, Gmail, Yahoo, Outlook. Great, okay? So these work with lists, you know that probably by now, but really any type of iterable, I can work with these. So here would be a set. Now a set, we should know, okay? You can think of these as lists, okay? They have some really unique functionalities, but uh, really it's a list that does not allow duplicate values. That's an easy way to go through it. But you cannot index a set like you can a tuple or a list. So what we're doing is I have this word. I'm trying to get what unique letters are in this word, right? For every letter in the word, we're gonna add that letter to our set. So I'm gonna have C O M P R. E, H, right? But there's two E's, okay? There's two O's, there's two S's. Our output is not going to have all that information, okay? So in the set, it would roughly work the exact same way. I could just create my set. Let's call this, I'll use the same name. Unique letters is a set. That's really it, okay? I'm going to say letter, and I can say for every letter in my word. That's it. All of this can go away. We don't need that. I can put this after. When we run this, clear my terminal, run your code, you can see the exact same output. Okay? So I hope you guys are getting value in this. I hope you're really seeing how comprehensions can shorten your code, speed your code up. Now, I'll leave you with this last one, okay? Uh, this is a dictionary comprehension. So. Yes, there are a few ways to do this in Python, okay? Um, we could use the counter class, which is built in through a module to actually do this, but uh, I just wanted to use this as our example. So what we're doing is we're really counting the letters in each word of the string, okay? So I have this string, comprehensions make Python code cleaner, true, <laughs> and I'm creating a dictionary. I want the key to be the word, comprehensions, and I want the value to be the length of that word. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm looping through and I'm getting every word in this string. But in order to get every word and loop through it, I'm going to take the string, which is our sentence, and we're going to split it. So really, at this first stage, we have a list of, uh, I'm not gonna put it properly, but it's really just a list of items. Comprehensions make Python code cleaner, okay? Now I can take my dictionary, I can give it the key, which comprehensions, and we can get the value, okay? All right, cool. So we don't need most of this, right? I can create a dictionary, word lengths. We're gonna make a comprehension for this. What is the key going to be? 
The key is going to be some kind of word. Okay, every key needs a value. Well, what's the value? Well, in this case, the value is right here. So I want to get the length of the word. That is the value. Okay, now we need to loop through something. So for every word in our original sentence, let's split it. Okay, we have our expression. In this case, it's just what are the key value pairs. There is really no expression. We are iterating through something. Okay, and um, you don't even have to tack on, right? I don't need a conditional statement here. Okay, I'm going to add one just to show you guys, but we don't actually need that. So if I clear this and run your code, boom, we have a counter. Now let's say I only want to get the words over, over five letters. Okay, so then I could come here and be like, okay, if the uh, length of the word is greater than five, I could add that, right? If I run that, now we can see that I'm only given the words that uh, are greater than five. That's done in a single line of code. There we have comprehensions in Python. And there you have it, guys, Python comprehensions. I hope that you got value in today's video. That's my goal, to create content, share it with you guys, and provide you value to really help you learn. We talked about list, dictionaries, and set comprehensions. If you got value in today's video, help me out. Hit the like button, subscribe, drop a comment, let me know your thoughts. And if you guys want to truly master Python where I've packaged up my eight years of experience for you guys in a single course, the first link in the description, that is my new Python masterclass. I cannot wait to work forward. Nope, that's not right. I can't wait to be able to work together as we move forward. Anyways, guys, I will see you in next week's episode of Code with Josh. Until then, Python crew.